All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go to unit circle 7C. Ooh. Learning target here is that we can find the important angles on the unit circle and find their coordinates. Okay, so uh, we've, we've learned how to play drums. No, we've learned how to uh, find side, cosine, and tangents and the other trig functions as ratios of angles in a right triangle. All right, so that's where we've been. We've been talking about a right triangle and all the angles in them. Now, here's the thing. When we talk about two angles in a right triangle, let's say like this. Do you know what Greek letter that is? So it's very good. Alpha. It does. It's alpha. Okay, it is alpha. All right, and then let's see. Small space. What's that one? That one's beta. That one's beta. All right, let's have a capital B. Okay, so we got alpha, we got beta. What is the largest that angles alpha and beta can be? 45. 90, right? Oh, well. Okay, or actually less than 90, right? Yeah. So if, if we have a right triangle, these two angles here have to be less than 90, okay? Uh, so we've only dealt with sine, cosine, and tangent of angles less than 90. Well, in this section here, we're going to expand our horizons a little bit. And we're going to talk about angles on the coordinate plane, or what we call circular angles. All right? So uh, when we think about angles in the coordinate plane, we're going to think about this. We have, obviously, two sides of our angle, make two rays. Okay, by definition, an angle is made by two rays that share an endpoint. Okay? Uh, and so we describe this angle as having... Jot this down, please. An initial side. So it's got an initial side, and that would be this side right here. It's got an initial side, and then we're going to think of it as turning in a certain direction. And it's going to have a terminal side. So there's our terminal side. Okay? So two important angles. And the angle is measured in between it. Now, if we're going, if we have an angle that has a vertex at the origin, it's in standard position. Please jot that down. Standard position. All right. So an angle in standard position has a vertex at the origin. And actually, we've got to add a little bit to that. And it also has uh, and an initial side. Initial side on the positive x axis. All right. So, in other words, where this highlighted green angle is, that's in standard position. Okay. So, if we have one angle on the positive x axis, one one side, it's in standard position. All right. Positive angles are measured in which direction? Remember from the past. Counterclockwise. Counter right. Counterclockwise, right? Very good. And so the angles that go the other way are the negative angles. So positive angles are going counterclockwise, negative angles go counter. Uh, I'm sorry, go clockwise. Counter counterclockwise. Yeah. <laughs> counter counter. Double negative. Okay. All right. So, what does the uh, what does the clock do when it gets hungry? It goes back to set eyes. It goes back four seconds. Very good. Oh. <laughs> oh, four seconds. Okay. All right. So, it goes back four seconds. Nice job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was funnier when my son told it the last period over the phone, so you missed out. All right, so if we have, here we have a positive angle, as you can see, positive pi over 3. Here we have a negative angle going this direction, negative 5 pi over 6, okay? All right, now we want to talk about something called coterminal angles. So check this out, by the way. We've only been talking about angles between 0 and 90, and now we have angles bigger than 90, like 5 pi over 6. That's bigger than 90. In fact, how big is 5 pi over 6 in degrees? 
150. How do you do that? Um, I just always divide 180 by 6. And Good. Then pi Excellent. So we know pi is 180, right? Because it's half circle. Pi is 180 divided by 6. That's 30. How many 30s do we have here? We have five 30s. Nice job. Make sense? Okay. So this is negative 150. 5 times 30 is 150. And, and pi over 3, 180 divided by 3. That's just a 60 degree angle. All right. So uh, we're, we're going to practice on getting really good at recognizing uh, these radian measures. Okay. And then it's, it's kind of like a language. It's kind of like uh, when you're learning Spanish, you're trying to talk to somebody in Spanish. You, you listen to them in Spanish, right? What does your brain do? Translates it into English, probably. And then you think about what you want to say in English, and you translate it back in Spanish, right? Maybe. All right. If you do Spanish or whatever, OK. So um, excuse me. Um, same thing here with radians, right? We're going to start to get really good at radian measure, OK? Excuse me. Coterminal angles are angles that have the same, write this down, terminal side. So coterminal angles have the same terminal side. So what did that mean? That means a coterminal. Very good. Thank you very much. She is actually not here. Thank you. All right. So what does that mean? Well, um, here we have an angle that's negative 150 degrees. Well, what if we talked about the angle that started here and goes all the way around over and ends here? It has the same terminal side, but it's going the other direction. How many degrees is that? If this is 150 negative, how many degrees is going in the positive direction? 360 minus 150. 360 so it's 110. minus 150, right? So 360 is a full circle. No, that's right. Minus 150 gives us 210 degrees. So this angle right here, going in this direction, is a 210 degree angle. Does that make sense? Because together it's got to make it 360. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. There's a good book out there. What's it called? Reflex. It's called the reflex angle. Very good. All right. Angles greater than 180 are called reflex angles. Now, what if we took, what if we took our angle here? Let's see if I can do this. Uh, okay. So let's say we start there. Okay. And we bring it all the way around here, and we keep going. And then we land right here. How many degrees did I just turn? Do it again. Do it again. Take two. All right. So we're going to start here. This is our initial side. Okay. So we're going to standard position. We're going to go all the way around here. Keep going. How many degrees so far? 360. 360. And then we're going to stop here. Uh, we get there. 360 plus 210 would be 570. Okay, so negative 150 degrees is the same as 210, which is the same as 507. They're coterminal. All right, uh, let's say one more here. What if we started here? Uh, what if we started here and we went around to there? Okay, so now let, let's, let's forget this. Let's talk in radians for a second. Okay, this is pi over 3. How many radians is this angle coming around on the negative side? Uh, 2 pi minus pi over 3. Okay, okay good. Yeah, that's right. We know 2 pi is a full circle minus pi over 3, right? 2 minus pi over 3. Okay. Um, well, let's, five let's get a common denominator. Okay. 3 pi over 3. Say it again. I thought negative 3 pi over 3. Oh, there will be an over 3, but this is 6 thirds pi, right? 2 pi is the same as 6 thirds pi, right? And we're subtracting 1 pi over 3, which is the same as 1 third pi, right? So we have 6 thirds pi minus 1 third pi. What are we left with? 5 thirds, or 5 pi over 3. 
Everybody okay with the fact that five pi over three is just five thirds pi? Okay. Okay. Five. All right. Two pi is the same as six thirds pi. Subtract one third pi, we get five thirds pi. It's negative. Or five pi over three. Because this is just five over three times pi, right? Put the pi up top, put it up front, same story. Okay, so this angle right here, all the way around, is going to be negative 5 pi over 2. All right, you get the idea. Uh, let's try it out. Okay, come on down here at the bottom. Uh, find and draw a positive and a negative angle that are coterminal. Okay? Doesn't be exactly, of course not. Okay. So we got our 60 degree angle. That's what I said. Something saying. about up here. Okay. Uh, we, it's in standard position. All right. So these are standard position angles. Uh, what do we, what's this negative angle that goes all the way around here? Um, negative 300 degrees. Negative 300 degrees. Are we all good with that one? All right. What if we go in the positive direction because we need another positive one and we come back and land here what would that be 420 are we okay with that okay trevor you good with that so we went a full circle 360 degrees and then we went 60 more to land right back here okay so a 400 and so what do we say 20 yeah 420 
a 420 degree angle would be the same as a 60 degree angle, all right? So now we've broadened our definition of an angle. An angle is measured by how many degrees it has turned, okay? Uh, so, you know, another good way to think of it here is, is if we had a point on a circle, how many degrees would it travel in, you know? So if we had this, okay, if we had a circle here, let's see if we can get a circle here. Let's try this. There we go. Okay, so if we have a circle, we've got one angle here. Okay, and if we want to measure, if we're measuring this angle, let's try this. Display, trace. All right, so here we go. Ready? Oh, whoa! Like that? Oh, that's Race Tracy. Let's see if we can get this here now. I just want the point. There we go. Okay. So if I were to kind of imagine all of the degrees that this has gone to come back to this place, okay? If it went all the way around and landed back here, it went 360 degrees, and then whatever we have. Whatever we have here, we can measure. Okay? But that's the idea now. Okay? So we're really measuring how far this dot goes all the way around the circle. Okay. Um, so, a negative 120. So we've got negative 120. Well, uh, we've got negative 90. Where well, that goes down to here. So how much further do we need to go? 30 degrees. Another 30 more. degrees, right? So we need to go another 30 degrees. And so there we have about a negative 120. I guess technically 30 degrees. So what's a positive angle that is coterminal to that? 140 degrees. 360 minus 120? Wait. So 100, no, no more than that. Okay. We know that this little bit is 30 degrees here. So Shane, um, how, if this little bit is 30 degrees here, how much further do we have to go past 180? 60. 60. So what's the total what? 240. 240. Yeah. Okay. Uh, these two also have to add up to 360, right? Can you come up with a negative one? Negative yeah, 80 minus 360. Okay. So 360 plus 120, right? Or negative 360 plus negative 120, right? And so that would be negative 480. Negative 480. Okay. We're good there? Yep. All right. It's yeah, let's go radians here. Three quarter pi. So, Jared, pi radians is how far? How far is pi radians? Yeah, that's right, half circle, 180. So, pi radians is 180, right? So, if we go three quarters of a pi, how far would that be going? You got it. That's good. So, that's like our 45 here. So there's three quarters of a pi, three quarter pi. Okay. What if we go this other way? What's our negative angle? It has to add the two pi. Two pi is how many quarters? Eight quarters. So what's the negative going to be? Um, negative five pi over four. Negative five pi over four. Does five fourths and three fourths add to eight fourths, okay. which is two pi, which is a full circle? Yes, it does. Okay? If you need to translate the degrees, go ahead. Okay? Uh, how about one more positive one? Okay. So 3 fourths pi or 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. 2 pi again is 8 fourths, right? 8 fourths plus 3 fourths is 11 fourths. So 11 pi over 4. Radians. Okay, there's a co terminal angle that will go all the way around and land back here. Okay, very good. Turn the page, please. Yeah. Now let's get into our trigonometry. So we've now redefined our angles. Okay, we've redefined our, our angles. We can now have angles bigger than 90. We can have angles bigger than 180. We can have any size angle we want. Okay, and so now we need to see, well, how do you find the sign of a 480 degree angle? 
because don't we need a right triangle for sine? And how do we find the sine? How do we put a 480 degree angle into a triangle? Uh, okay, so we need we need a new way of looking at. It. Still going to be right triangles, but we'll see how it works. Okay, so consider this: we've got an angle here, theta, and uh, it goes to the point five three. We need to find the sine, cosine, and tangent, the trig ratios for this angle. At this point, what do we need in order to find a sine, cosine, and tangent? R. What's, what's that? Side lengths. We need side lengths. Very good. Side lengths of what? Triangle that goes from A to oh. A. Oh. All right. We need a triangle. And what kind of triangle are you thinking? You're picturing uh, right triangle. A right triangle. So we're picturing a right triangle here. All right. There's our right triangle. Draw it in. Okay. And what is the the length of this base of this triangle? Five. It is five. And the height is three. And we. So how do we find R? Um, uh, no tangent needed yet. Yeah. Oh. Just need an old Greek guy. What's that? Pythagorean theorem. Very good. We need we need an old Greek guy. Yeah. I could have said old dead Greek guy, but uh, okay. So let's see. What do we have? Three squared plus five squared equals r squared. Is it four? Three, four, five right triangle? No. No, it's not. Okay, so we get thirty-four. So it's almost uh, now, before we go any further here, let's think about this. You know, so what what really happens here? We squared, we added, we square rooted, right? So what if I picked some other point here and called this x, y? How could I find this distance r here for some generic x, y? Yeah, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? Okay. So since x squared plus y squared equals r squared, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So if we ever need to know, and we will need to know a lot, it is just the distance formula. Very good. It's just the distance formula because it's coming from the origin. Excuse me. Thank you. All right. So very good. All right. So your turn. Go ahead. Find your trig ratios. Take a moment. Find all six of them, please. In terms of x and y, or in terms of r. In terms of r, you do not need to rationalize it without me. Okay. I'm going to pass these little quizzes back and we'll try to take a moment to talk about them before we go. I don't want to get them in your hands for a moment. Nothing else, it just kind of shows us what we need to work Major Gray. No Tory, no John. Yeah, we never did get to see each other. Oh, you guys got loaded off the island. Alright. Thank you. How much did you do that? Oh, is that Kaylee? K question mark here, girls? Yeah, okay. Okay. I know we okay. Okay, Stacy's still even here. Don't fill me in. Why? yourself in. No. I don't know if that is. You even know his last name. Okay, did you get him? You could. I'm watching you, John. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
All right, guys, let's check it out. <laughs> Sine of theta. Here we go. Throw it out there. We get sine of theta. Three over three over root thirty-four. Cosine. Thirty-four or no five. Five over root thirty-four. Tangent. Three over five. All right. Uh, Cosecant. Flip it around. Over uh, three. Right. And secant. Three, three, four, five. Tangent. And I didn't see the rest. Cotangent. Thank you. Yeah, we already got tangent. Cotangent. <laughs> equals five thirds. All right. Okay. So guys and gals, here we go. What if we switch it up a bit? Besides. Let's bring it over here. Now we have a different point. It's not five three, but negative five three. Okay. Now in this case. All right. Back together here, guys. <laughs> We'll check out that quiz in a second. Okay, back together here. Okay. So now if we go to the left side, we have negative five over three. Check it out. Okay. Um, we still have the same radius, the square root of thirty-four. Nothing new there. We just found it out above. Okay. But now we want to find our six trig functions here. Well. Can we make a right triangle with this big old beta angle in it? Yes. No. No, because no, it's bigger than 90, right? Okay. But, yeah, that's right. We can make a different right triangle over here. Okay. And so that's exactly what we do. We call this a reference triangle. Okay. So this triangle right here is called the reference triangle. It's very important. Reference. So this is the reference triangle. And the key is this, the reference triangle is drawn from the x-axis. Okay? Drawn from the x-axis, very important. Okay? So if we have a point that's not in the first quadrant, we have to draw a reference triangle. If it is in the first quadrant, we're still drawing a reference triangle, but it's a little more, our, our angle is actually in the triangle. Okay? But here, our angle is not. Angle beta is not in the triangle. But we still, it still works the same. Okay? So, what's our sign? What's our sine of theta? We'll use this angle right here. I'm sorry, we should be beta, actually. Sine of beta. Okay. What could you use? Uh, no, because, well, this is beta right here. Okay? Well, we're going to find it using this triangle. So talking about this acute angle here, what's the sign of this triangle? Opposite over hypotenuse. 3 over root 34. Cosine of beta. Well... It is negative 5. Wait a minute. How can a triangle have a length of negative 5? I can't. All right. We are going to define this distance, which is going left, as a negative distance. Okay? It is the, because these are negative x values, right? Okay? So it's gonna, we're going to define it as negative 5 over root 34. Our tangent... Well, our tangent is opposite over adjacent, 3 over negative 5, which we just moved the negative upstairs, 
negative three fifths. Okay, so the moral of the story is this, we use the reference triangle to define our sine, cosine, and tangent, and other ratios. We can do our other ones, right? Great. Try your other ones here. What is the reciprocal of sine? You guys got that down? Cosecant. Yep. Cosecant. What happy year? It's falling apart. It's already been a happy year. Dying. Cosecant of beta is root 34 over 3. Secant. Root 34 over 5. Negative. Right? That's supposed to be a negative there. Okay, and they did my cotangent of beta is negative five thirds. All right, so here's what we have. Moral of the story is this: when we are finding the sine, cosine, and tangent uh, in the coordinate plane here of an angle in standard position, okay. Uh, then we have our radius, which is a square root of x squared plus y squared. We can find that radius. So this is the distance to p from the origin. And we can define this sine. Notice sine is always going to be this y value, right? This 3 is just from the y value over the uh, radius. The radius is always the hypotenuse. The cosine is going to be x. So that's just our x distance. And in this case, it's negative. Up above here, it's positive 5 because we had a positive x, right? So the cosine is just this x value over that r because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is always the x value. That's what we're defining it as. Okay? And to find the tangent, well, that's just, x, just y over x. Okay? So if you know a point on the terminal side, we can find all these values, okay? Uh, cosecant and all these, obviously, just flip it around, okay? One little note, notice we have here, uh, y is not equal to 0, and x is not equal to 0, and y is not equal to 0. This should be a y there. Yeah. Because you can't have 0 in the denominator, okay? Well, why don't we care about r? r will never be 0. r will never be 0, okay. Very good. What kind of angle would give us a y value of 0? Uh, y value of 0. Where will we have a y value of 0? 90, 90, 70, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 180, 180, 360. Any coterminal angle of 70. Okay, good. All right. Here's the one. Flip the page, please. Okay. Oh, now we have a negative y. I don't like that. Well, yeah, so now we've got special angles. So let's, let's look at our special angles. What are our special angles from our special right triangles? Uh, 30, 60, 60, and 45. 30, 60, and 45. Okay. Uh, what are those in radius? Pi over... Six, six, good. Three, pi over four. Okay. These are our special angles. They come from our special right triangles. The 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. Okay. All right. So, um, let's let's actually ignore these numbers for a second. Wipe them out with your whiteout if you have it. All right, so the question is, what if we have this angle of 330, positive 330 degrees? How many degrees is this coterminal right here? Okay, so that's 30, right? Negative specifically. Okay, we want to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. All right. Now we've got some points again. We can scratch out. Staff, please remember to announce office hour requests by Thank the end of the much. period. We will Students do that. Should report to your class request. Thank you. you make sure you go. Okay. So um, we can pick any side, any sides we want, right? Well, we've got a 30, 60, 90. So which side is easiest to start from? 
which side is easiest to start from? 60 because it's positive. The short leg, long leg, or the hypotenuse? Which one do you want to make one? Well, if we remember our 30, 60, 90, which comes from an equilateral triangle, right? No, long leg. Long, long okay. Leg. You want to come. You want to start with the short leg. Everything yeah. starts with the short leg. Okay. Yeah. And at 30, 60, 90, everything starts with the short leg. Okay. Yeah. That's so right. if this that's is right. one. How long is the hypotenuse? Two. Two. No. The hypotenuse is always two times longer. And how long is the short leg? It's a square root of three. This is a little triangle you need to have memorized. Okay. You got to have this triangle memorized. The other one is our 45, 45, 90. And if these are one, how long is the hypotenuse? Okay. These are triangles you want to have stuck in your head. So does it matter what points I pick out here? Nope. No, it doesn't. So let's make life easy on ourselves. If that's one, how long is the hypotenuse? Two. Two. How long is this side right here? Square root of three. Square root of three. Okay, so now can we find the sign? Okay, so oh, what are the coordinates at this point? Uh, we're going we're over. Going one, one, two, square root of three, one. We're going over square root of three. We're going down one. So what kind of one is it? Negative one. It's a negative one. So we got to watch out for our positive and negatives. Okay, because so knowing what quadrant we're in. So we get the sine of three thirty is well, it's the y value over the radius. Remember. <laughs> Look back to the last page. It's the y value, or the y value in this case is our opposite. That's what it should be. Negative 1 over 2. What's our cosine of 330? Cosine is square root of 3 over 2. Okay, that's the x over r. So the x is our square root of 3 over the radius of 2. And if you plug this to your calculator, you'll get exactly the same thing. Okay, you plug in sine of negative uh, 330, you'll get negative 0.5. Okay, how about tangent real quickly as we wrap this up? Tangent is negative 1 divided by the square root of 3. It is y over x. Y over x, and so we get negative 1 over root 3. Okay, which multiply top and bottom by root 3. And we get root 3 negative over 3. Okay. All right. There you have it. Uh, we'll, we won't do the other three right now. You can do those. Okay. Uh, and so last thing here is this. Okay. Um, and if we have uh, pi over 6, this is pi over 3. This is our 30, 60, 90, right? Okay. So let's switch gears real quick. Let's say that the hypotenuse is 1. If the hypotenuse is 1, what do we do to go to the short leg? divided by 2. And what do we do to that to find the long leg? Square root three. Times the square root of 3. So we have the square root of 3 over 2. 1 half times the square root of 3. Okay. What if we have a 45, 45, 90, or pi over 4? Well, we divide by the square root of 2. Okay. And we get square root of 2 over 2. And the square root of 2 over 2 for this guy because he's the same. Okay. These two triangles here, they're slightly different from what we had above. The relationships are the same, but the key is this, and here's where we're going to end, so we'll pick up tomorrow or next time, okay? If we have a unit circle, if this is our unit circle, okay, the radius is 1. If the radius is 1, well, that tells us the coordinates. This is, uh, uh, sorry, this is a half. This is a half, and this is root 3 over 2. And so the coordinates are root 3, hold on just a moment, and a half. So the coordinates, the key is, and on the last page, the key is that if it's a unit circle, the coordinates give us the sine and the cosine. And we'll see that this is the cosine of pi over 6, and this is the sine of pi over 6. Okay? All right, and here you go. Here are your K periods.